What did PewDiePie do to get banned in China? A stabbing in Hong Kong. And China sets its sights on Taiwan. That and more on this week's China Uncensored. This is China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. This week's China news headlines. In Hong Kong, protesters once again took to the streets last weekend. Organizers say 350,000 marched, but because police did not give permission, it was technically an illegal rally. That means anyone who come out will inherently break the law. Uh, so that's the tactic that the Hong Kong government is using. So don't think that uh, the, the movement is uh, slowing down. Uh, in fact, it, it is growing stronger and stronger. And if you pan your camera around, Every single one of the protesters today standing here are uh, literally breaking the law. The march happened just days after a brutal attack on Jimmy Sham, head of the Civil Human Rights Front. They're an umbrella group that's organized some of the biggest rallies over the past few months. They also originally organized this Sunday's march, but backed out after police said no. But that didn't stop protesters from marching anyway. And that didn't stop police from responding with tear gas and water cannons shooting blue dye laced with pepper spray. However, protesters did light a fire, and some did throw petrol bombs. But as for the barricades protesters erected, police now just drive through them. And they also decide to spray this mosque with water cannons, even though there weren't any protesters there, creating a mess that protesters then helped clean up. Hong Kong police later said that spraying the mosque with a water cannon was an accident. The kind of accident where they stopped the water cannon, carefully took aim, and then sprayed it several times. Hong Kong police, successfully alienating every part of Hong Kong society. But it's not just police Hong Kong protesters need to worry about. On Saturday, a man stabbed a teenage protester in the neck and stomach. The protester had been handing out flyers. Okay, no one likes flyers, but that's taking it too far. It was so bad that the protesters' intestines were exposed. He was taken to a hospital where he's in serious condition. So who was this guy? Apparently, a cook from mainland China. After stabbing the protester, he threatened others, yelling that Hong Kong was a part of China. That's really not how a chef should put his knife skills to use. Speaking of someone whose job performance hasn't been great, the Financial Times is reporting that Beijing might replace Carrie Lam as Hong Kong's chief executive. That might have been enough to stop the protests four months ago. At this point, it's kind of like when a teacher you hate is replaced by a substitute teacher who's even worse. What I'm saying is, Carrie Lam's replacement is going to be Miss Viola Swamp. But one thing that the Hong Kong government did finally do this week the Legislative Council formally withdrew the extradition bill that sparked the protests. Which might have been enough to stop the protest four months ago. I'm seeing a theme here. But for Hong Kong protesters, the NBA is a gift that keeps on giving. At a Nets vs. Raptors preseason game over the weekend, hundreds showed up wearing Stand with Hong Kong t-shirts. A group of Tibetan activists also showed up as did a group of pro-honey protesters dressed as Chinese leader Xi Jinping. And during the season opener between the Lakers and the Clippers, protesters passed out thousands of Stand with Hong Kong t-shirts, which led to this magical moment. Open Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. It brought a tear to my eye. The NBA, of course, has been criticized for selling out to China after controversy over a pro-Hong Kong tweet sent out by Daryl Morey, the general manager of the Houston Rockets. According to NBA Commissioner Adam Silver, the Chinese Communist Party asked him to fire Morey, but he refused. Of course, Chinese state-run television says that's a dirty lie. The party would never do that, and he should really watch his back because retribution is coming. Not only is the Chinese Communist Party spreading censorship in America, it's also threatening Americans who don't bow before it. And that's why I've spent the last seven years of my life making a show warning people about the Chinese Communist Party. On Monday, China's defense minister said conquering Taiwan is a national priority. Of course, he didn't say conquer. That sounds bad. The Chinese Communist Party calls it reunification. You know, where the Communist Party seizes control with military force, 
kills a bunch of people, and replaces the rule of law with authoritarianism. Reunification. With an island that was never part of the People's Republic of China to begin with. Of course, taking over Taiwan will be expensive. Fortunately, the Chinese regime has a brilliant money-making scheme. Sue the US. China is seeking billions in penalties against the US at the World Trade Organization. Ironically, the suit relates to a case dating to before the Trump administration and unrelated to the tariffs it has slapped on Chinese goods. China is seeking 2.4 billion US dollars in retaliatory sanctions against the United States after it failed to comply with the WTO ruling in a tariffs case dating back to Barack Obama's presidency. There's a problem with this money-making scheme, though. If the WTO could actually enforce its rules and stop countries from cheating, China would have a lot more to answer for than the US. The Yang Gang is in trouble. No, not Andrew Yang. Navy Lieutenant Fan Yang and his wife, Yang Yang. Yang had top secret clearance with the P-8 Squadron, an anti-submarine unit. The federal government accuses him of working with two Chinese nationals to get them military equipment, which would ultimately be funneled to the communist government. Great. So if China ever invades Taiwan, the U.S. will have had a helping hand in it. Now, while selling weapons to a communist regime at odds with the United States may sound distinctly un-American, Yang makes up for it doing the most American thing possible, spreading America's love of guns. He's also accused of taking a Chinese national to a local gun range and selling at least one gun illegally. Guns are banned in China for civilians, so many Chinese nationals come to the U.S. to experience guns for the first time. That probably still doesn't make up for selling U.S. weapons to the communist government of China. But he isn't the only one. According to this press release from the Department of Justice, Li Tao, 39, sought to export highly sensitive military and space technology from the United States to China. I believe we have footage of that interrogation. Have you ever stolen from an employer? Yes. And where were you employed? NASA. <laughs> yeah. Would you steal a rocket ship? <laughs> no, just some pens and some plans. Plans? Space plans. <laughs> and that, kids, is Mr. Show. I've now educated you on the truly important things in life. Some good news for once. Uyghur activist Ilham Toti has been awarded the Sakharov Prize for Human Rights. In not as good news, Toti was imprisoned for life back in 2014 for doing radical things like encouraging dialogue and reconciliation between Uyghurs and Han Chinese. The European Union gave the prestigious award to Toti. In response, the Chinese regime announced that Europe was canceled. And finally, YouTube star PewDiePie has been banned in China. Now, at first you might think, oh, that's because YouTube is banned in China. So even the world's biggest YouTuber would be banned. But that's not the reason. Apparently, the Hong Kong protests have entered even the world of YouTube Let's Play. Behold, analysis of the Hong Kong situation from PewDiePie. The next meme needs a little bit of context. It's the whole dispute with the Hong Kong and China. For those of you who don't know, Hong Kong is a semi-autonomous state from China. It has its own laws, law system and, or jurisdiction. I don't. Then out of nowhere, someone from NBA tweets something saying, I support Hong Kong. And then NBA is like, oh God, we need Chinese money. China is like that one person on Twitter that can't take any criticism and just blocks everyone. Deep. What's that, Shelly? With 100 million subscribers, PewDiePie managed to let more people know about China and Hong Kong than I have in seven years of the show? I knew I should have started a Let's Play channel instead. Now I'm questioning all my life's choices. But before I go down that rabbit hole, it's time for me to answer a question from one of you. A fan who supports China Uncensored with a dollar or more per episode by contributing through the crowdfunding website, Patreon. Michael Sun asks, are there those in mainland China who are sympathetic to the protesters' cause? That's a really interesting question. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to know what people inside mainland China think about the Hong Kong protests. Since everything is so censored inside China, it's difficult to tell how much people actually know. Plus, the Chinese state-run media have been pushing constant propaganda accusing Hong Kong protesters of being violent, rioting separatists bent on splitting apart the motherland. When we were in Hong Kong in June, we did interview some mainland tourists. 
Check it out. It's called What Chinese People Really Think About Hong Kong Protests. Most were pretty reluctant to say anything. If someone in mainland China has managed to hear about the protests and develop some sympathy, it would be very dangerous for them to express it. Often we hear stories like this, where mainland Chinese viciously defend the party line even abroad. That said, I wouldn't be surprised if China had plenty of people who hold cynical views of the Communist Party, even if they keep those views to themselves. Thanks for your question, Michael. And if you have a question for me you want to hear answered on the show, Sign up to join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army by supporting the show with a dollar or more per episode. Again, YouTube is demonetizing us so much, we would have to shut down the show if it weren't for your support. And everyone, thanks for watching. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time.